Welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of slide videos for the RSGB Advanced Examination. So today we're going to look at capacitors. Now during this first video in, uh, for capacitors we're going to uh, deal with um, some of the topic items in the syllabus and then there will be a subsequent uh, video dealing with the remainder. It's quite a large subject. So 3E1 says that we should understand the factors influencing the capacitance of a capacitor, area and separation of the plates, permittivity of dielectrics, and formula C equals Ka over D. We should understand that capacitors have a breakdown voltage and that they need to be used within that voltage and we should recall that different dielectrics are used for different purposes, e.g. air, ceramic, mica and polyester. In the second video we're going to deal with the rest of uh, that 3E3. We're going to look at uh, losses increasing with frequencies in capacitors. And we're going to look at 3E4 and 3E5 which concern time constants and capacitors in series and in parallel. So firstly a bit of revision. In the intermediate course we looked at capacitors and we saw that the basic structure of a capacitor in its most basic form is two plates separated by a dielectric. A dielectric is similar to an insulator in that it does not conduct. But the dielectric property of the insulator is that it stores energy because its molecules become polarised. Capacitance is the ability to store charge and is measured in farads and that's the fundamental unit. But for real-world capacitors, prefixes like micro and pico are used because a farad is a very large quantity of capacitance and is rarely encountered. And we also learned that capacitance depends upon the area of the plates, so the bigger the area of the plates, the greater the uh, capacitance, it depends on the separation between the plates. The further the plates are apart, the less the capacitance. And finally, the nature of the dielectric, or uh, another way of expressing it, is its permittivity constant. Now you'll come across dielectric uh, constant or permittivity. Both of them uh, are used, although a dielectric constant is being phased out. So permittivity is the preferred term. Let's have a quick look at what is permittivity. Permittivity is the ability of a substance to store electrical energy in an electric field. A vacuum is the baseline permittivity from which we measure the performance of all other dielectrics. So here is a vacuum capacitor. We don't come across these very much, although with the increased popularity of magnetic loops, people are once again turning to these. It's simply a glass bottle with a vacuum inside separating uh, two um, conducting plates. But let's use the symbol instead. So there we have a vacuum capacitor. The permittivity, and that sign is epsilon, so epsilon naught is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. That is the permittivity of free space. In other words, that's the ability of free space or a vacuum to store electrical energy in an electric field.
and the relative permittivity is 1 because if we measure the uh, relative permittivity of um, the permittivity of free space against itself, then it's 1. If we look at an air capacitor, the relative permittivity, epsilon r, is very, very slightly above 1. So air is a slightly better dielectric in terms of storing uh, electrical energy than is um, a vacuum. But because the numbers are so close, we often consider that air and a vacuum have the same relative permittivity. Paper has a much better permittivity than air or a vacuum, and the value is approximately 2. So it's twice as good at storing electrical energy in an electric field as air or a vacuum. And mica is five times as good. And if we were to represent this visually, it might look something like this. The electric field, field lines for the vacuum and air capacitors are fairly spread out. There are about twice as many times as many field lines for the paper one, and there should be about five times as many lines for the mica capacitor as for a vacuum or air. This is the capacitance formula C in farads, the fundamental unit, and it's important to remember this, C in farads equals Ka over D. And that formula you will find in the formula sheet that you're given in the exam. Here it is, C equals small k a over d, where k equals epsilon 0 times epsilon r. And you recall from the previous slide that epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space, and epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the um, dielectric in the capacitor that we're considering. So for a capacitor, C equals Ka over D, and K equals epsilon 0 times epsilon R. So let's have another look at K. If we had a microcapacitor, then K is made up of epsilon 0 times epsilon r. Epsilon r being the relative permittivity of mica, that is, a permittivity relative to free space. And we know that's about 5. So k in this formula would be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, that's epsilon 0, times 5 or about 44.25 times 10 to the minus 12. Another factor of capacitors, of the dielectric, is its dielectric strength. Dielectric strength is the maximum electric field that a, that a material can withstand without breaking down, in other words, sparking across. It also depends on things like temperature. Now the spark happens because the material between the uh, two um, poles of the capacitor breaks down and ionizes. But as there is no material in a vacuum, a vacuum will never break down in the sense of uh, causing a spark in the way that other dielectrics do. 
If there is sufficient voltage across a vacuum, the molecules from one pole will migrate to the other, and so a current might flow, but it's not the same as a spark. So let's look at some of the um, uh, dielectric strengths that we've got. If we look at the air capacitor, we see that it's 3 kilovolt per millimetre. So if you had a vein capacitor and the veins were 1 millimetre apart, you could theoretically, with dry air, have a voltage across the veins of 3 kilovolt before the capacitor sparked across. Paper's a good insulator, dry paper is anyway, and the uh, dielectric strength is about 40 kilovolts per millimetre. And mica has a dielectric strength of about 118 kilovolts per millimetre. So if we turn our voltage up, on the right hand side we've got a pictorial voltmeter, we've turned the voltage up to above 3 kilovolt, and the air capacitor has now sparked across and is useless to us. We turn the uh, voltage up even further to 40 kilovolt. Then the paper capacitor, assuming these capacitors have a gap of about one millimeter, the paper capacitor is now uh, sparked across and the air capacitor has caught fire because the voltage far exceeds what it was capable of handling. And if we turn the voltage up even further to 200 kilovolt, then the mica capacitor has also finally broken down and the other two are well on fire. So that's looking at the two main properties of dielectrics. Permittivity and dielectric strength.